Hello everyone. In the last class, I taught you about Kepler's three laws of planetary motion and Newton's law of gravitation. So, now in today's class, so before moving on to our next topics, I'll tell you something about the invention and discovery, the difference between the invention and discovery. So, I told you that the gravitation was discovered by Newton. I didn't tell you that it was invented by Newton. So, but I told you that the Galileo, Galileo Galilei invented the telescope, isn't it? So, there is a difference between this invention and discovery. So, people usually mistake these two things. Uh, a physics student should know these basic things. Okay, so the America was discovered, it was not invented. America was discovered by whom? By the sailor Christopher Columbus. It was not invented, it was only discovered. Okay, so even the telescope, many believe that it was invented by our Galileo Galilei. But it was Hans Lippery in the early 1600s, he invented this telescope. He invented a device which used to magnify things. So he used glasses to magnify things. But our Galileo, he used a different pattern of glasses to magnify objects 20 times. So that is why, that is the reason people believe that it was, this, it was invented by our Galileo. So this is the difference between the invention and discovery. So discovery means that uh, if that exists, that has to be existed before that itself. Okay. So it was not invented, it was not created. It was already there and it was just came, people came to know about that thing at that time. So that is called as discovery. So it is not called as invention. So invention means that has to be created. Okay. So this is the difference between invention and discovery. So today's topic, today's first topic is gravitational constant. So gravitational constant can be represented by the term G. So it is capital G. So this gravitational constant is numerically equal to the force of attraction between two bodies each of mass 1 kg is separated by a distance of 1 meter. I'll repeat again. Gravitational constant is numerically equal to the force of attraction between two bodies, each of mass 1 kg is separated by a distance of 1 meter. So, let us take the expression for force here with respect to universal law of gravitation, that is Newton's law of gravitation, that is F is equal to G M1 M2 divided by D square. So, this is the expression for force here. So, we, the, according to this statement, gravitational constant is numerically equal to force of attraction between the two bodies, each of mass 1 kg. So, the mass has to be 1 kg here. So, that is M1 and M2 should be equal to 1 kg. Understood? So, and that two bodies is separated by a distance of 1 meter. So, distance has to be separated by 1 meter. That is, the distance has to be 1 meter. So, the masses of the two bodies is 1 kg and the distance is 1 meter. So, if I substitute the values, all these values onto this expression, what I get? So, F is equal to G. So, in the place of M1, I can place, I can put M1. In the place of M2, I have to put 1. So, divided by 1 square is 1. So, I will have anything, anything that is multiplied and divided by 1 will be that in itself. So, it will be G itself. The force is equal to G here. That's what I am telling you here. It is the, it is numerically equal to the force of attraction, force of attraction between the two bodies, each of mass 1 kg is separated by a distance of 1 meter. So, this is what this gravitational constant speaks about. So, 
we we need to know the xi unit of this g what we have to do is let us keep this g on the left hand side and put everything on the right hand side so what it becomes so g will be equal to g will be equal to f yeah, into d square divided by m 1 M two, so this will be the G here. So we need to know the SI unit for this G now. So what is the SI unit for force? We all know that it is newton, right? So the SI unit for distance, it is meter. So distance square is here, so it will be meter square. Then the ma M one and M two are Masses. The SI unit for mass is kg. It is on the denominator. So, if we take the denominator and put that to the numerator, it will be inverse form. So, kg to the power of minus two. So, Newton meter square kg to the minus kg to the power of minus two is the SI unit for g here. That is gravitational constant. The value of G was experimentally determined by Henry Cavendish right after the discovery of the gravitation. Right after a few years, he determined the value of G experimentally. So the value of G is said to be six point six seven into ten to the power of minus eleven newton meter square kg to the power of Minus two. So this is the value of G, which is six point six seven into ten to the power of minus eleven newton meter square kg to the power of minus two. So this Newton's law of gravitation is applicable to all type of bodies in the universe, almost all the bodies in the universe. So that's why, for that reason itself, it is called as universal law of gravitation. so and our gravitational constant is also called as universal gravitational constant okay remember this so gravitational constant is also called as universal gravitational constant and newton's law of gravitation is also called as universal law of gravitation so you should know this so our value of g which is gravitational constant will never depend on three factors so those three factors i'll explain now so it all it doesn't depend on nature and size of the bodies so we all know that our uh, sun is way much bigger than our earth so it never depends on the size of the bodies so when you take 1300 earths it will be equal to 1 um, jupiter so 1300 earths can fit into 1 jupiter and around 1000 jupiters can fit into one sun so this is the size of our jupiter and sun they are humongous they are very huge okay so it never depends on the size even the earth will attract our sun the sun will also attract our earth so it never depends on the size okay the next one is the nature of the medium between the two bodies so it could be any medium any two bodies can attract each other it could be a liquid medium it could be a solid medium or it could be a gaseous medium even it could be a plasma so the this type of mediums can never affect the Uh, gravitation the universal gravitational constant okay the third one the physical conditions such as temperature pressure etc of the surrounding medium so even the temperature the pressure etc these are the physical conditions even these conditions cannot affect our g here okay so this is what you have to know about the gravitational constant which is represented by capital letter g the next topic is gravity so gravity it is the force of attraction exerted by the earth on the body 
I'll repeat again. It is the force of attraction exerted, force of attraction exerted by the earth on the body. So if you place an object on the surface of the earth, the earth will exert certain amount of force onto that object. So that force is called as gravity. So it is the force of attraction exerted by the earth on the body. It could be any kind of body. The earth will exert certain amount of force onto that body. That particular force is called as gravity. So the next topic is acceleration due to gravity, which is represented by small letter G. So you should know that know this. Acceleration due to gravity is represented by small letter G, and universal gravitational constant is represented by capital letter G. So this acceleration due to gravity says that it is the acceleration produced in the motion of body due to gravity. Okay. So let us take an example here. So an aeroplane will take off like this. Okay. While flying in mid air, so it will be in motion so it will be in motion so due to the motion the body will experience certain amount of force which is exerted by our earth that is called as gravity okay so the earth will exert gravity on that particular body which is in motion we have taken an aeroplane as an example for that so that force that acceleration produced in the motion of body because of gravity is called as acceleration due to gravity here the name itself speaks acceleration due to gravity acceleration because of gravity you should know this okay it is the acceleration produced in the motion of body due to gravity so we have learned too many definitions in this chapter from until now so we have learned about gravitation we have learned about universal law of gravitation or newton's law of gravitation we have learned about gravitational constant we are now learning about the gravity and acceleration due to gravity all looks similar to one another but still they are very different from one another so they look similar but they are all different from each other so you should all know this definitions so all these definitions they are very important for you let us derive the relation between acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant so let us take our earth uh, earth here which has the mass m and which has the radius r so r is the radius of our earth m means the mass of the earth and let us place a body on the surface of the earth okay which is of mass small letter m so r is the radius of the earth capital m is the mass of the earth we have placed a body small m on the surface of the earth so, so this is what we have done according to newton's law of gravitation the expression for force is g m m divided by r square according to this figure the force will be equal to g that is the, uh, what is this g this is gravitational constant m is the mass of the earth m is the mass of the body on the surface of the body r is the radius of the earth so this is the distance here so this is what we have we know from our previous things which we have learned in our previous classes so the force the expression for force is g f is equal to g m m divided by r square you also know one more expression for the force which is f is equal to m a isn't it we all know this which is force is equal to mass into acceleration we all know this but the acceleration which we are speaking about is acceleration due to gravity which is represented by small letter g so this a becomes g automatically so f is equal to mg we are speaking about acceleration due to gravity here so that is represented by small g so we have force force on the left hand sides of the both equation so we shall equate together so what it will be mg 
will be equal to G M M divided by R square. So this is how it will be. We equate the both of these equations. So we shall cancel the M M on both sides. So what with the what the remaining remains here? G will be equal to G M divided by R square. So this is the relation between the acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant. We have acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant. So this is the relation between acceleration due to gravity and gravitational constant. So you might get problems based on this relation. So this is very very important. You need to know about this relation.